ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन समाकर चक्षुर नीलित तस्मय श्री गुरव नम नमो गौरकिशोराय साक्षात्मूर्ति विप्रल भरोसाबोधे पादाबुजाते नम श्रील गौरकिशोर दस बाबूजी महाराज इज नो सी गुरु of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur. He is, of course, a great devotee in his own right. In other words, if we can imagine that he hadn't initiated Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, he wouldn't have been any less a devotee for not doing so, although there's no question of him not having initiated Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur because there is an eternal bond between them, eternal relationship. The recent generation, generations of Acharyas, that means our own Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Stansa, Srila Thakur, Srila Gorki, Srila Das Prabhuji Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Jagannath Das Prabhuji Maharaj, they, which makes speaking in Mayapur in glorification of our gurus, they have revealed the Dham, which was the Dham had by the desire of the Lord, who is none different from the Dham, become hidden. These Acharyas have revealed the Dham and Dham Seva, what it means to serve the Dham. And this process is continuing and we are all able to take part in this process, which is the process of the Krishna conscious movement is to reveal the glories of the Lord to the world to, to bring the world to the Dham. So we glorify our Acharyas, one of the main facets of the glorification is how they are eternal residents of the Dham and reveal the Dham to the world. So Srila Gaurakishad as Babaji Maharaj, he was Bhajanandi Sadhana. He was not an outgoing preacher, although his preaching is more valuable than millions of others who may attempt to preach. Prachar kore, kore keha na kore achar, they attempt to preach, but they don't know how to behave properly in devotional service. So he showed what it means to Chant Hare Krishna. Not by any big display, but by his attachment to the holy names. Sometimes he would jump in the Ganga and remain there for a few days underwater in transcendental frustration that the, the, the name is not manifesting to him. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswat Thakur. Most of what we know about Srila Gorki Shardas Babaji Maharaj, we know through Srila No means it's not a matter of collecting facts and figures, but Guru can give us Guru. So, he often spoke about Srila Gorki Shardas Babaji Maharaj and as our own Srila Prabhupada did, he often ascribed all of his activities or all the mercy he was receiving to the, he would, he would, Bhakti Siddhan Sarasaitaka would generally refer to his Guru Maharaj as my Guru Pada Padma. He would address him as the lotus feet of my guru. Everything is by the mercy of my Guru Pada Padma. 
So he would often uh, refer to him. In one lecture, he spoke, Our Guru Dev was not an instructor in any subject concerned with the enjoyment of this material world. Again, he was the sole unmistaking judge of all topics of this world. But I am deprived and fallen. Because of my weakness, not everything Sri Guru Dev said entered my heart. But let me have millions of tongues and millions of heads to repeat whatever entered my ear by his mercy and a lifespan of millions of years in unlimited universes for broadcasting, broadcasting descriptions of his incomparable, non-harmful compassion. That will be my Guru Puja. He will be satisfied and being pleased will shower unlimited benediction by which I will be able to broadcast descriptions of his mercy with even more millions of tongues. On that day I will get relief from the glorification of all topics concerned with this destructible illusion and from all kinds of mundane education within the universe. So of course Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Svartakala was a an insuperable scholar, tremendous scholar, even from the material perspective. His, of course, his scholarship was not anything mundane, but even from the material perspective, his scholarship was of a different order to that of anyone of this world. In his youth, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvatthaka demonstrated the pastime of being an astronomer, which means being a mathematician also, in the days before computers. You had to do the calculations yourself. So he was, uh, even in that field, he was a revolutionary. He was a great scholar and he was of course also a, a great devotee from the very beginning but he was pursuing uh, Vedic astronomy of course even, which although connected to Krishna is not connected to Krishna in the way that Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaran is connected. So uh, he was directed by Srila uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Actually, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Thakur, he revered Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur as his guru on the same level as Srila Gorky Shadas Prabhupada Maharaj. So, uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur sent Siddhanta Saraswati to Gorky Shardas Babaji Maharaj. He, he sent him, you go, take your diksha there. Of course, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he's the eternal, it's an eternal relationship which when manifested on this mortal plane appears to take place within mundane time. So it appears as if there was a time when Siddhanta Saraswati was not the disciple of Gorky Shardas Bhamji Maharaj. Actually he's, he is eternal. So he sent Srila Bhakti Nau Thakur sent him. Srila Siddhanta Saraswati was aristocratic by his upbringing, by his behavior as a very moral person he had. Uh, he had or was to later reveal corruption in the offices of the Maharaj of Tripura. Highly intellectual, whereas by external consideration Babaji Maharaj was 
almost illiterate, quite eccentric and maybe even quite crude. People used to come and try to touch his feet. He would beat them with an umbrella. And his manner of preaching wasn't concerned with Gorky Jodas Babaji Maharaj. He wasn't concerned with nicety. He, his preaching was you, you surrender on the spot or else get out of here. That was it, more or less, just like that well-known incident, the Maharaj Nandi from Koshin Bajar came and he was begging Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, you come and come to my palace, come to come and stay with me and bless my home. Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, he refused and said, well if I go there I might want to try and enjoy it and then you won't like me. But I've got a better idea, why don't you just stay here, forget your palace and live with me. Just don't go back. Stay here. So, there appeared to be a tremendous difference between the personalities and the, the, the background and everything of Gorky Shadas, Prabhuji Maharaj, and Bhaktisya and Saraswat Thakur. Many persons were eager to initiate Siddhanta Saraswat. They wanted to capture him and advertise, this is my disciple. But he avoided them all. And Bhakti Thakur also protected him. Don't fall into the clutches of these people. He was already preaching against them, but they were trying to seduce him. Yes, you, you please come. I, you can be my disciple. You can be my disciple also. But when he approached Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj for initiation, Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj didn't show any interest. He showed indifferent. No, he, he was. He didn't. He, showed, he didn't want to initiate. He, he, uh, he said, "Well, I'll think about it." He said, I'll ask. He, he, he refused. He said, I, I, "I'm not capable. You're so learned." And. and Saraswati, Siddhan Saraswati kept on begging him and he said, well, all right, I'll ask, you go, I, I, I'll ask Mahaprabhu and uh, you come back after some time. So he came back after some time and said, so? He said, what did Mahaprabhu say? Oh, I forgot to ask him. <laughs> so this, this shook up Siddhan Saraswati because he was used to wherever he go, wherever he went, people highly respected him. He was a great scholar and not someone you want to get in an argument with, a very moral person. He was highly respected even in his youth, even as practically a child. He was, he was uh, the chair of astronomy at Calcutta University was reserved for him in an age of Scholars, we don't know what scholars are in the modern age, but in that time there were still scholars. So the, the chair of astronomy was reserved for a 16 year old boy. Anytime you, he refused them, anytime you want to come, you come and take it. And there are all these old people. This Tapu Dev Shastri was a famous astronomer who practiced, who Siddhant Saraswati, before he took sannyas, defeated his principal disciple in a debate so badly that uh, he, he totally defeated the whole life's work of Dev Shastri. And everything that he, he, he showed it all to be wrong. And Dev Shastri was sitting in the assembly, he passed stool and urine in the assembly. He was so totally thrashed in debate. So Siddhanta Saraswati was highly respected. But Gorky Shodas Bhajimari didn't give a damn about his learning, about his position in society, or anything. He just didn't, he appeared to not care about him in the slightest. So he's just a, you know, just kind of botheration. Why don't you, like everyone else, why don't you just go away and leave me alone? So, Bhaktisiddhan Sarasari Thakur later described that where now the false ego I was thinking, I am a big scholar of mathematics and philosophy. Let any great pundit come at any time, day or night, 
and I will cut his propositions to pieces. At that time I got the darshan of the lotus feet of Sri Guru De, Guru Padapadma. He ignored everything that was previously appreciated in me, my truthfulness, my moral and pious life, and my scholarship. scholarship. Knowing them to be of little value, when I saw that he ignored whatever was good in me, I realized how good he himself must be who could ignore so many so-called good qualities in me. You get that? He was, but Siddhan Sarsar was first, he considered, I'm good, I'm pious, I'm learned, I'm respected, but Gorky Jordan, he didn't care about any of that. So then he thought, what level is what level of goodness is he on that he sees this goodness which is so much respected by the world as being insignificant? What inconceivable wealth he possessed. And this is Gorky Sodas Babaji Maharaj who sometimes just for the sake of maintaining some some slight level of worldly decorum, he would go to the burning ghat and take some cloth and wrap it around his loins. Otherwise, other times, he didn't bother dressing at all. And cloth from the burning gap means it's totally impure from the mundane perspective. So he, he didn't have anything materially. He is Saksha Vairagya Murti. He is the... Um, he is renunciation in personal form. So... He didn't have any, he didn't have anything of this world. But Siddhan Saraswati said what inconceivable wealth he possessed. Being neglected by him, I realized that there was no one more fallen and contemptible that, than myself and that that was my real identity. So, Gorky Shantas Babaji Maharaj was preaching to Siddhan Saraswati by totally neglecting him and treating him like he didn't, didn't matter at all. This was his manner of preaching. The very things which I thought of as highly desirable, such as scholarship and upright character, this great soul regarded as valueless, I realized that within himself, this exalted personality possessed priceless treasure. I then considered that either he is extremely puffed up or is actually exceedingly merciful. In great pride, I then said to my Guru Dev, you are a worshipper of that cheetah and debauch Krishna. So why will you take mercy on someone like me, dedicated to ordinary morality? Humbly and sincere, oh. humbly and sincerely, I prayed to the Supreme Lord for His mercy. Later, by His grace, I realized that without receiving the mercy of this peerless saint and without serving Him, nothing good could happen to me. So, His apparent attitude of self-sufficiency and complacency has changed. When I realized that and acted accordingly and then received the causeless unlimited mercy of my Sri Guru Dev and shelter at his lotus feet, I deemed my life fulfilled. I had considered my Guru Dev to be unequaled in Vairagya, but somewhat short of learning. He's renounced, but he doesn't really know very much. I, I know so much. I've studied so many Shastras. Yet, he reduced to powder my audacity born of book learning. With the mallet of his mercy, he revealed that whatever I had adjudged to be the highest ideal was in fact most low and despicable. When, by his mercy, that instruction first entered my ears, my tiny brain lacked the capacity to accommodate such transcendental knowledge. But to all fools like me, he gave the chance to hear such lofty topics. I have understood that if the people of this world do not receive the same jolt that I received from my Guru Dev, then their consciousness will not awaken. Therefore I am telling everyone, 
I am more foolish than anyone else on earth. Please, all of you, do not be foolish like me. Do not live your life within the limitation of calculating consciousness. Please engage in Vaikuntha Katha and you will become a great person. I am asking you only to accept what I, by the causeless mercy of the Supreme Lord, have understood to be supremely beneficial. Srila Bhaktisthan says her taco was and is famous for preaching in uncompromising style here. He gives one of the several explanations of why he did so, that he was jolted, he was shaken up by Srila Gorky Shaudas Prabhuji Maharaj. He didn't pander to his to, to his worldly perceptions. But rather from the very beginning he smashed them. Of course, any worldly perceptions that Siddhant Saraswati may have appeared to have is uh, simply a... Uh, it's not actually so, but it may appear to be so even to himself by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord for facilitating these exchanges. So... Srila Bhakti Siddhan Sashar Thakur learned to preach from Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj and from Bhakti Vinod Thakur, his two gurus, how to present Krishna consciousness. Uh, so, Babaji Maharaj was refusing at first. He didn't, he said, I don't want to accept any disciple. He said, I had some disciple before, but he cheated me, he went away. He came to be my disciple, and then he just went, he cheated me, so I won't make any more disciples. So, this went on. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsar Thakur quoted from Srila Bhakti Ram Thakur that, Karuna na hoile, kandiya kandiya prana raki bhava. If you don't give me your mercy, I will. I can no longer maintain my life. So seeing his genuine resolve, humiliation, humility and surrender, Srila Gorky Shardas Babaji Maharaj agreed to initiate him, although he refused so many others before. Now sometimes it's said that there's some story made up how Saraswati Thakur was standing on a bridge over the river and said, I'm going to jump in and commit suicide if you don't initiate me. But this is a fairy story. Only what's reported is that he said, Prana Raki I won't, I can't maintain my life if you don't give me your mercy. So someone added some embellishments to that. But actually there's no record of him threatening to commit suicide. Although Gorky showed us Babaji Maharaj and on some occasion he was he was saying it's a, uh, I'll jump in the Ganga and drown and I can become a ghost. It'll be better than having the association of all these materialistic people coming and bothering me all the time. So uh, he gave him his mercy. He, he didn't have Jaffa beads himself, so he didn't give Jaffa beads, he just gave some dust and never did down. And the name Varshapanavi Devi, Varshapanavi Dayata Das, this uh, apparently was. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was already using this name before his initiation. He, he would sometimes sign letters by this name. This is his own identity, his actual identity. The this, this, this servant of Krishna, who is the lover of Radharani, so that's his identity, as much as his identity is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So these are all different facets of his personality. 
Um, Bhakti Stanza Sotako later wrote, on receiving just a touch of the lotus feet of Shiva, uh, yeah, because this uh, Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj, he, would, he wouldn't allow any, he would, he would threaten to curse people if they tried to touch his feet. He were afraid because they didn't get cursed, but obviously as a powerful sound of his curse would be powerful. But he voluntarily placed his feet on the head of Siddhanta Saraswati Vasha Bhanavi Dayatadas and told him to preach the absolute truth. Uh, he told him to specifically to preach the message of the Shachandharva of Srila Jiva Goswami. Which is interesting because probably Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj had not formally studied Shachan Dharma. Although everything he spoke was completely in, uh, in line with the teachings of Srila Jiva Goswami. So later Siddhanta Saraswati commented on receiving just a touch of the lotus feet of Sri Gurudev for the span of one year I lost all sense of this external world. I do not know whether any transcendental agent equal to him has ever appeared in this world. How may those who are busy with lust, anger, and so on of the world ever know him? I have been busy within this temporal sphere trying to bring sense gratification within the grasp of my hand. I often thought that by obtaining the objects of sense gratification, all my shortcomings would be fulfilled. Indeed, I did attain many rare achievements, but my own personal shortcomings were never mitigated. In this material world, I have had the association of very high-class, well-born persons, but noting their various deficiencies, I could not offer them praise. Seeing me in such a lamentable condition, at such a time of adversity, the most merciful Gorsunda gave permission to his two dear most devotees, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, to grant their blessings to me. Because I was always intoxicated with worldly false ego, wanting to be praised again and again, I was depriving myself of my own real benefit. But due to the influence of devotional service from a previous birth, I came into the association of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, my spiritual well-wisher. My spiritual master, Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji, would go and visit Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and would often stay with him. Out of compassion for others, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur pointed out my spiritual master, Srila Gorki Das Babaji. upon seeing whom the extent of my worldly false ego diminished. I knew that all living entities who have taken the human form of life were fallen and low by my, like myself, but by gradually observing the spiritual fiber of my master, I realized that only a Vaishnav could reside on this mortal plane and be of exemplary character. My Guru Dave would mercifully tell me, reject your learning, purity and aristocracy and come close to me. Don't go anywhere else. Whatever you require, as many rooms, houses, palaces and mansions and as much learning, learning skills, self-control and renunciation you will get. Simply come close to me. Let there be a house. Let there be an entrance. Let there be learning. Do not run after this kind of thinking. Do not consider as necessities whatever ordinary people accept and such, as such. I was a fearsome debater, but with great kindness my Guru Dave kicked out my pride in debating. Even in unlimited millions of lifetimes I will be unable to find the limit of his compassion, nor will anyone else be able to do so. Although I am unfit, he recognized me as his servant, thus relishing my cherished desire by which I may live forever. 
So, after being initiated by him, Sri Siddhan Saraswati did not physically associate with, with Babaji Maharaj much more because he was, he had actually been sent to the Jog Pit to take up the service and Bhaktivinoda Thakur had sent him to over, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had taken responsibility for the Jog Pit. At that time there was just a, the, the, the present temple which we see there, that wasn't there. The, the office in front of there, which, the, that was the temple. And the, the office, there were more buildings being built around it, but that, there was one small brick building and it was in a jungle in, in the middle of nowhere from a materialistic point of view. So it was not an easy job to run things on or even to keep anyone there to do the service. The, the, the pujaris had to be born Brahmins. It was very difficult to keep anyone. So uh, Siddhant Saraswati was mostly at the Jogpeet in Mayapur and also there wasn't a regular boat service or buses or any such thing at the time. And uh, Gorki Shodras Babaji Maharaj was performing bhajan in Kulia, which is present Navadip town. So Siddhant Saraswati did not physically associate with his spiritual master much more. But from time to time he would cross the Ganga to have darshan of Babaji Maharaj. And he was certainly always connected with him on the transcendental platform of service. Speaking of the samadhi of Srila Gorkishar Das Babaji Maharaj, and then that's an important point. The samadhi of Gorkishar Das Babaji Maharaj was originally uh, in Kulia, Navadip site. And uh, although Siddhan Saraswati wanted to take it, to, to give samadhi to Babaji Maharaj in Mayapur Dham, but due to opposition of others, he was able to make the samadhi himself, to give samadhi to Babaji Maharaj. But in Navadip town, but then later, by the will of the Lord, Ganga flooded and washed away. The, 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 everything became inundated. So, uh, different people were trying to find, uh, to salvage the transcendental form of Babaji Maharaj. And Bhakti Siddhanta taken sannyas by that time said that, that they will be able to find it who are who have the actual they will be able to take the form who have the motive to actually serve him because, because others had were using his samadhi as a means of income so part of the transcendental form of Babaji Maharaj was taken by Ganga Devi uh, which he also fulfilled one of his desires. He said that my form, uh, I, should, my, I should be thrown in the Ganga. So part of his body Ganga, Ganga took and part was established here at, uh, at the Sri Chaitanya Mark. So it, it, when his transcendental form was to be a established at Chaitanya Mat, some of Saraswati Thakur's disciples, they, they said, well, we should place this samadhi at Advaita Bhavan, which is next to Chaitanya Mat, because he was initiated in the Advaita Pariva. But Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur put him on the banks of Radha Kund. So, this is an important point placed him, or, or placed him means he invited him to please accept our service at your eternal place on the banks of Radha Kund. Radha Kund means at Chaitanya Mat. None different from the original Radha Kund. So, uh, it's an important point to understand how the Acharyas, the, we can understand them through, we can understand our Acharyas through the Acharyas, not by any external consideration that his uh, his 
belonging to the Advaita Pariva. That's, that's, another, that's another still disputed topic. So anyway, speaking at the Samadhi of Srila Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj, on 29th of March, 1933, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sasra Thakwa said that my Guru Maharaj had given me three instructions. Number one, don't make any disciples. Number two, don't associate with anyone. And number three, do not go to the Maya Brahmanda, the, the, the world of Maya, which means Calcutta. Srila Bhaktisthan Sasar Thakwa then said that I followed all these instructions. I never made any disciples. Those who considered themselves as such were in fact his gurus. For by observing their ideal inclination for Hari Seva, his own tendency to serve increased. So actually, Bhaktisthan Sasar Thakwa, although he was very strict with his disciples, Many t- times he revealed that actually he never considered them his disciples. He considered they're actually as all my masters. He never considered I am a guru. He said, if anyone thinks I'm a guru, then he ceases to be a Vaishnava. So he said, I never made any disciples. Number two, he, uh, I never associated with anyone. Association means to accept something from others. But I accepted only what was given by my Guru Maharaj. So I never associated with anyone. And I never went to Calcutta. I only went to the Gorya Mat, which although apparently in Calcutta, was actually Vaikuntha, beyond the influence of Kali. Similar incident, uh, Gorky Shardas Babaji Maharaj, once he was visited by... A, so many people would come to visit him. So one caste Goswami from Calcutta came to visit him. And Gorky Jodas Babaji Maharaj asked him that when you go back to Calcutta, please go and see my Bhakti Vinod Prabhu and tell him not to remain in Calcutta but come and join me in Navadip. Don't remain in that Kali town, that place of Kali, Kali Kata. So, uh, this Kasko Swami went back to Calcutta and he met Bhaktinath Thakur. And he relayed this message. So Bhaktinath Thakur asked him, please go back to Gorky Shodhas Prabhuji Maharaj, convey my blessings to him for his Hari Bhajan, and tell him that where I, Bhaktinath, reside, where I reside is not the place of Kali. So Siddhan Saraswati, who was there, who would in his youth, he would, when he was with Bhakti Rautako, I mean, when he was in the same place, he would just stay by him all the time. And go on chanting and chanting and chanting. He'd just sit next to Bhakti Rautako. So, Saraswati then explained to that Kasko Swami that Narottam Dash Thakur has explained Jata Vaishnav gone, Sheshtan Vrindavan. Wherever Vaishnavs are present is non different from Vrindavan. Most people who approach Srila Babaji Maharaj do so with their own ideas. They make a show of taking Sadhu Sangha, but they are actually unwilling to accept his beneficial instructions. He reciprocates accordingly with their materialistic outlook, outlook and explains and speaks in a manner to cheat them as per their desire. Only to one who approaches him in full surrender does Srila Gorkishar, does Babaji Maharaj, open his heart and reveal the truth. <coughs> in 1906, Siddhanta Saraswati was lecturing in Kulia on the topic of Kanishta, Madhyam and Uttam Adhika. Having explained the first categories in relation to the appropriate Bhagavad verses. He then quoted the corresponding shloka from Bhagavatam describing the topmost devotee, Sarva Bhuteshu Yapashyad Bhagavad Bhavanatmanaha Bhutani Bhagavad Yatmani Esha Bhagavad Gautama. Then he could, after elaborately explaining what is Kanishta Adhika, what is a Kanishta Adhikari, what is Madhya Madhika, what is a Madhya Madhikari, he then said, oh, what, what, 
What shall I say about Uttamadika? My Guru Dev, who is the who is the personification, for want of a better word, of this statement, is presently residing here among us in Kulir. One who is competent to study his character will be able to understand the meaning of Uttam. Now, this lecture and Siddhanta Saraswati, his lectures generally as was not unusual at that time when people weren't always rushing off to do this and that. Uh, lecture, anyone give a lecture would usually be at least three hours, four hours like this. So he'd been sitting and lecturing, but then just he turned he turned his head. And then he he saw in the corner, although he wasn't aware all through the lecture, Gorky Shadas Bhaji Maharaj had been sitting there and listening. And he had just said that if you want, you want to know what Uttamadikari is? If you have the ability to study the character of Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj, then you go and see him. Then you'll understand what Uttam is. And just at this point, he looked around and saw Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj walking out, leaving. And that, he sat through the whole lecture and he, at this point he just left. Some are pastimes which haven't been told much, hardly in English. One young man, Brahmana by caste, named Mitra, he visited the Jogpit and after spending some days with, in discussion with Siddhanta Saraswati, this before he, before Siddhanta Saraswati had any mission or just maybe a handful of followers at that time, he was at the Jog Pit and chanting and overseeing his service. Chanting means chanting. Three likes, three times sixty-four rounds every day. So this Mitra, his name was Mitra. <coughs> He was inclined towards severe renunciation. He just, all he wore was some ragged cloth which just came to above his knees. So seeing Siddhan Saraswati, even though Siddhan Saraswati himself was very austere, you know, just hardly eating and living in very austere conditions and chanting all day, but seeing Siddhan Saraswati, he was engaged in apparently worldly activities, managing the job pit and arranging for funds and paying the pujari and legal matters and all this kind of thing. This Mitra thought that I don't have anything to get here. What is this? And considering that, Gorky Shadas Babaji Maharaj, he was the guru of Siddhan Sarva. You know, why, what do I need with this Siddhan Sarva? I'll go direct to him. Gorky Shah. So he went to, and he gradually became apparently the, the number one assistant of Gorky Shadas Babaji Maharaj. But along with the responsibility accepted in the service of Babaji Maharaj, uh, along with that, his ego developed. And he became so puffed up that when Siddhan Saraswati would come for darshan of Gorki Shodas, Prabhuji Maharaj came to see for darshan in his toilet, in his bhajan toilet, which Gorki Shodas, Prabhuji Maharaj was living. He was living in a, in a latrine because he thought people won't They'll think, well, that's impure, so uh, they won't want to come and see me. So I'll stay in the latrine, and then I can just chant, and they won't bother me asking for blessings. So uh, this Mitra refused, no, you close the door, you cannot have darshan. 
And people would bring all kinds of rich food for Babaji Maharaj, nice sweets and so many things. But Babaji Maharaj, he was never going to, for one thing, he wasn't going to take such gorgeous food. And for another thing, he wasn't going to take food from these people. So, Mitra looked after it. He would take it and in his own toilet, which he, he'd made his own bhajan toilet next to Babaji Maharaj, he would stash all the food there and make sure that they got honored by himself. And becoming very healthy, he also managed to uh, make contacts with other people's wives at night. So, uh, one day when Siddhan Saraswati came, Babaji Maharaj was outside and he, just as he arrived, Babaji Maharaj was, was severely chastising a person who had re- tried to touch his lotus feet. Babaji Maharaj called Siddhan Saraswati, come here. And right in front of this mitra, he took his own foot dust and wiped it all over Saraswati's head. Bhaktisthan Saraswati, he later described that he, he was actually thinking that actually my Guru Dev, he's displeased with me. That he's just giving me his foot dust just to, just to underline how rascal and wicked I am. Oh, they're doing this offering of Tulsi leaves. Anyway, we missed that. So, when, uh, about six months later, when Saraswati came back again for Darshan, Mitra informed him that you are not allowed anymore in his presence, in Babaji Maharaj's presence. So Siddhan Saraswati said, well, at least tell him I'm here. And hearing his voice, Babaji Maharaj came out and told him, go and bring Bhakti Vinod Prabhu from the world of Kali, from Calcutta to, to Godroom. People are attacking me with their annoying talk. Then Saraswati, with great humility and respect, inquired, Are you testing me? If the good fortune I receive, in six months he was thinking, uh, my, Bhavi, my Guru Maharaj is displeased with me. After six months later he came back, thinking that, that if, if, I, if I actually, if I actually have good fortune in the, in, in the form of your lotus foot dust on my head, then I will not be deceived by your deceptive pastimes. Is it that Srila Bhaktino Thakur does not for a moment reside anywhere else but Sri Radha Kund, or that you reside elsewhere than Radha Kund? You follow that? He's saying, you come and bring him to me. Bring Bhaktivinoda to me. But he's saying that, well, Bhaktino Thakur also always resides at Radha Kund, even though he's apparently in Calcutta. And you also always reside in Radha Kund, so you're always together. So what are you saying? Is that Bhaktino Thakur is not at Radha Kund, or you're not at Radha Kund? Are you trying to deceive me, or what? What's going on here? That you have entered a latrine is simply your pastime to apprise of their own situation persons who desire the stool of money, women, and prestige. But despite observing you in the stool house, I shall never de- be deprived of the dust of your lotus feet. Babaji Maharaj said, Yes, I know that Bhaktivinod Prabhu and yourself are directly Nityananda Prabhu. All your activities are according to Mahaprabhu's desire. How can insignificant persons understand you? Babaji Maharaj then proceeded to recount how he had discovered Mitra to be a philanderer and epicure and turning to Mitra, advised him to go home, get a job and bring an end to his hypocrisy. Although it was most humiliating for a renunciate, even one of the show bottle brand, to return to secular life, the hapless youth actually followed Babaji Maharaj's sage advice 
his ideals of renunciation having been consumed by false pride and offensiveness. Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur said that of, among the hangers-on who considered themselves Babaji Maharaj's disciples or associates, they had never understood his actual glories or indeed anything about Gorya Vaishnavism. And that uh, Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj, although he appeared to favor some people, he actually, he actually never favored them. To those he wanted to cheat, he would be nice to them, apparently nice to them. And those he gave his mercy to, he would, well, he only gave his mercy to very few, to Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati. So, by Bhakti Siddhan, we can understand who are the Acharyas through the, the Bhakti Siddhant which he has given. Uh, we should be very careful to understand the mercy and teachings of the Acharyas through the line of the Acharyas. There are others also. There is one book called Gorya Vaishnav Diva, which is well known among Bengali Vaishnavas, in which, well, in one widely circulated magazine within ISKCON a few years ago, there was an article on Srila Gorky Shardas Babaji Maharaj, in which it was stated that observing his ecstatic symptoms, his close associate, Lalita Didi became astonished, which is a fairly useless statement because what were the ecstatic symptoms and what were the, how did Lalita Didi become astonished isn't explained. But anyway, I wrote to the editor of that magazine and said, what do you mean, his close associate Lalita Didi? Because either you're saying, Didi means sister, so either you're saying, Gorky Jordas Babaji Maharaj had an associate who was a woman, which is impossible. Or you are referring to that the famous Sahajya Lalita Didi of Navadvip who uh, dressed, although a man dressed as a woman and imitated the behavior of a woman considering himself to be Lalita Saki. He would dress as a woman, put the red altar on his feet and cover his head He'd go into hiding four days a month during his menstrual period and all things like that. So, so you know, where did he get that from? This is his close associate. So where did he get it from? The author got it from Gorya Vaishnav Jiva, which may have some information. Some information as could be seen through the eyes of people who had no entrance into understanding Gorky Jodas Babaji Maharaj at all, which we have to see through the eyes of our Acharya. If Bhaktisthan Sasra Thakwa said that he appeared to favor them, but actually he didn't favor them, and they're not his associates, even though they considered them to be his associates, at least within our society, we should accept that rather than importing the Sahaja ideas that Babaji Maharaj was so much against. This is called, this is considered the parochial view, as I was replied to, that despite the parochial view of the Gorya Mat, in other words, Pakistan says with Tarkos, parochial means limited vision. It's actually a fact that Korki Shodas Babaji Maharaj had so many different associates. It's a fact for those who are cheated. <laughs> To them it's a fact, but we shall receive our facts through the Acharya Parampara. And that's all I'm going to say now. Hare Krishna. All glories to our gurus, all glories to Srila Gorki Shaldas Prabhupada Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Any questions? <clears throat> Some years ago, it's been very clear in my memory, I remember a discussion between the
devotees. And it was concerning the authenticity of the Guru Parampara. The authenticity of the Guru Parampara. Yeah, it's an ongoing discussion. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I saw that. I saw that discussion. There was an email discussion. And you were showing that actually there is a Diksha link. Explain what? Explain what? What's all the controversy about? Well, there probably wouldn't have been a controversy if Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thakur had not been so aggressive in denouncing the caste Goswamis and Babaji's, which even now from our parochial viewpoint seems to have been rather extreme. If he had just, even if he had made some disciples and probably, and, and not condemned others, and probably then there wouldn't have been so much backlash because others did this. Narottam Das, he was not from. Oh, Narottam Das initiated, he got. Narottam Das is worshipped for having initiated, although... Interesting. And the, uh, the Shamananda line, they, although not Brahmins by caste, that comes down to Rasikananda, who is Kshatriya by caste. They also give the Brahmin thread and to people they initiate. So, and that it came to be accepted in course of time. So it probably wouldn't have been such a big controversy if Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thakur hadn't been so heavy in condemning persons who were uh, making a business of guruship in the name of Lord Nityananda and Advaita Prabhu. There is a book meant to discredit Gorya Vaishnavs. You've probably seen that. The Chaitanya Movement by Kennedy. Someone Kennedy. So he gives, he gives the whole profile of the average caste Goswami and it's not very flattering how he's a, he's, he has, he's a leech with sycophants and with nothing very spiritual to offer anyone. And as you noted in your Apa Sampradaya book, the, these, these like Karta Bhajas and others came up because these supposed spiritual alternatives were able to flourish because of the decadency of the old company. The old company was bankrupt. They were just going around and, and giving blessings and collecting... They'd even, uh, they'd have fixed fees. You want the guru to visit your home, there's a fixed fee. This is the fee for visiting. And for wedding blessings, this much, and you know, a fixed fee. You know, just to make everything organized and easy, and, and then, so they didn't waste their time going all the way to someone's village and then just getting three rupees. Well, three rupees was quite a lot in those days, but they had a fixed fee. Actually, the three, it wasn't as much as three rupees. It was like, it was in annas. So, so it was really being conducted very much on a business basis. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Sartaka, he wanted to establish the, and, and the Babaji's also, the, the, they, it seems from that uh, almost all of them were licentious. It was just how I say is that like Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj, he was an actual Bhajan Anandi. But, and there, there were many people who had, had felt the inclination to be like that. But 
they weren't able to do so because it's not such an easy thing just to to live on raw rice which is soaked in the Ganga and, and just live under an upturned boat or it's, it's such extreme renunciation one can attempt to do it but the actual the renunciation of God Krishna does Prabhupada Maharaj was a symptom of his Krishna consciousness not, not a not a means to try to attain Krishna consciousness. So for persons without the qualification to do so, they were, if they tried to do that, they'd simply uh, fall down. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was therefore recommending, be a householder. Don't try to be a renunciate, because just act according to your capacity. And if anyone came to Gorky Shah, does Babaji Maharaj, he would say, you know, you, you just surrender on the spot and live like me, or just forget it, that's all. So Bhaktisthan Sasvari Thakur, he gave a practical means by which people could become, by establishing muds, he gave a means by which people who were desirous to be devotees could come from the platform they were on and come up to that level and benefit others also. So out of necessity, he established the, the actual principle of parampara, which is not uh, uh, giving empty mantras. You've heard that phrase. Bhakti Rakshak Sri Maharaj used that phrase, giving, giving empty mantras. They're, 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 they're giving the sound, but there's no life there. So Bhakti Stansasar Thakur always emphasized that we, we have to hear from a living source. If someone may mantra tantra visharada, they might be expert in all the mantras and procedures, but if they're not Vaishnav by, by not simply by formality, but actually being there, then uh, they cannot be a guru. So he established the actual parampara, which is eternally existing, the, the, the link between uh, Nitya Siddha Mahabhagavat, who, who they're eternally related on the spiritual platform. More about this will be forthcoming. It's a big topic. Just yesterday I was discussing with one of the greatest scholars in the Gorya line today. We discussed a little bit about this. <laughs> so, Hare Krishna. Anything else? No. Three instructions, yeah. Yeah. Don't associate with anybody means don't take materialistic association. That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. Asad Sangatya Age Vaishnava Acha. Don't associate with materialistic persons. So Bhaktis Dhamsasri said, I never associated with anybody, even though he he moved among kings, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forbade or by his own example. Worse than drinking poison to associate with materialistic people. But Bhaktisthan Sasra Thakur said, I never associated with these people. I only associate with devotees because to associate means to take something from them. But I never took anything from them. I didn't accept their outlook. One who's spiritually powerful can mix with others and not be affected. For, for others, their advice don't physically or, or or verbally, what's the word? Orally, conversationally mixed with others because we'll tend to be influenced by them. So don't mix with others. I never took, I only associated with, with the, the devotees. And by observing their behavior, I was, I was able to, uh, the, the, the devotees of the Gorya Mat, he said, they're, they're sent by my Guru Maharaj so that I could see his ideal present in them. One other very nice thing he said, although sometimes he would, what we should see as enacting the pastime of chastising his disciples, 
But Srila Bhakti Stansasar Thakur also once said that um, hearing about the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I was thinking that nowadays, where can I get such association? As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is here, Panchatapa, Srub Damada, Ramananda Raya, and so many great devotees, where can I get such association? But he said that now I see that Mahaprabhu being merciful to me has sent so many people, he's referring to his own disciples, who are, he said, in no way less than the direct associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's given them, given me this association. So, there are many wonderful things. So, we'll finish. Hare Krishna. Srila Gaurakishwadas Prabhupada Maharaj. Peace.